The minor circuit teaches you how to play. The major circuit teaches you how to apply that knowledge in a way that will lead to your victory. But with the world circuit, there's nothing left to teach. There are still patterns to learn and weaknesses to find, yes. But now fights are truly difficult, in a way that not only tests your strategy, but your finger speed, endurance, and tenacity as well. With six full fights and no save point in between, you're gonna become very familiar with the boxers ahead. Now given, three of these opponents you've already faced before, but two of them are circuit champions back for revenge. And one's the most annoying little hanger-on imaginable, and they not only hit harder and take more punishment, but have new tricks up their lack of sleeves. Piston Honda, for example, tries to fake you out with this wiggling uppercut that comes out at an odd time. Bald Bull usually gets up on the 9 count, determined to wreck your hopes of a swift victory. Even Don Flamenco, who might seem like the most unassuming rematch possible, will actually attack you with a hook and a jab, making him a far more well-rounded fighter who can win by knocking you out just as easily as his ironclad defense can win by decision. The World Circuit ends up feeling like a Greatest Hits version of the game, reviewing what you've learned previously and asking for absolute mastery of its concepts. Not only that, but after the many, many attempts that come from losing the circuit again and again, you can find new and quick ways to take you through these old challengers. Piston Honda is now KO'd instantly if you can counter the Honda Rush. The Bull Charge becomes something to eagerly anticipate rather than dread, as taking it by the horns in the final round will always result in a knockout for Bald Bull. Don Flamenco can be exceptionally annoying, often taking the match all the way to decision, but he has another infinite you can learn. Just make your pattern left-left-right instead of alternating, and he won't ever be able to put his perfect guard up again. While losing to these guys again can be demoralizing, with time, they become fun warm-ups for when you're working toward your new opponents. Opponents like... Riding off the end of the Cold War, it's Soda Papinski, or Vodka Drunkinski if you prefer. With his unbalanced, top-heavy physique, uppercuts so fast they only consist of key poses, and his mocking laughs at every knockdown, Papinski revels in being an unknown Soviet enigma. Sure, he's better than you, physically speaking. Everyone in the WVBA not made of baguettes and band-aids is. But his true ace in the hole is how different he is to your puny American stylings and expectations. Papinski is the only boxer that fights in a southpaw style, learning from the last American to face the motherland by leading with his left hand. Southpaw fighters typically have an advantage at inboxing, since most boxers are right-handed, they're used to countering a right-hand style, leaving fighting lefties to be uncomfortable. Papinski reflects this brilliantly, with animations so awkward and unconventional that they hardly feel fair at first, including jabs with no startup warning. It's hard to get any stars off of him, and he'll usually dodge your star punch even if you manage to get one off. There seems to be no tricks to overcoming him. He is invincible colossus to end your career, no? <laughs> yeah, no. This guy needs to go. Fortunately, Pops has got a weakness, albeit one that his original name would tip you off better for. He's had a little too many bits of the bubbly, and doesn't have the brain power necessary to strategize beyond the most basic of boxing matches. When he winds up for an uppercut, Mac can feint a block, causing Soda to kinda just stay bewildered for an extra moment, wondering what little American boy is doing. He'll of course see no issue with crushing your skull like Sparrow's egg between thighs with just a moment more, but if you punch him in the gut during his moment of confusion, he'll be so stunned that he'll forfeit one of his precious few stars. And if he's ever stunned again, unleash that star and BOOM! Papinski will go down instantly to any star uppercut you manage to land on him. 
Surprisingly, stability isn't one of vodka's strong suits. Who could have guessed? Papinski's a tricky one to understand, but once you get past his bluster and initial onslaught, he's not that different after all. Welcome to hell. Let me level with you. Up until now, we've been talking about finding the weakness, hitting at the opportune time, wait for the tell, dodge his punch, and counter punch. Unfortunately, this no longer applies. As the champ of the original punch out, Sandman will absolutely wreck you a majority of the time, no matter how prepared you think you are. Oh, sure, you can learn his pattern and tricks like any boss in any video game ever, but there's very little advice I can give you other than to get good and try again. His guard is fierce, and even if you manage to break through, he'll automatically block any shots to his face, even while stunned. Something the players relied on all game to rack up the damage other than in Hippo's gimmick fight. Not only that, but Sandman can dodge the Almighty Star Uppercut, even while stunned, completely neutralizing the punch that pulverized Popinski. He starts the first round with 13 rolling jabs in a row, which give players very little in return even if you manage to counterpunch them. There are certainly ways to improve your odds. After his hook, for example, you can stun him and then punch his gut for a bit. But nothing is just gonna win you this fight but blood, sweat, and tears. But that's a whole lot of work. I mean, you look tired. Why don't you take a rest? <laughs> the Dreamland Express, Sandman's most brutal technique. Piston Honda did a little dance before it started, could be easily blocked, even countered outright. Bald Bull, he has a huge windup and he only requires one punch to beat. But this? This comes out of nowhere. Sandman just standing there, menacingly, waiting for a random amount of time before giving you a 10 second slumber. Oh, but he gives a tell, right? Sure, here, I'll show you how long it lasts. Missed it? Well, here it is again. This supposed tell? This mere flash? lasts a whopping two frames, meaning that at the NES's 60 frames per second, you have a mere one thirtieth of a second to react to three death sentences of uppercuts in a row. It's so fast that I honestly can't recommend fighting him on a modern LCD monitor. The reduced lag on the classic CRT display is practically a requirement to dodge this bad boy on reaction. Inevitability is the greatest fear Sandman provides, and staring him down, you know the end is coming. It's just a matter of when. <laughs> Yes, if by a miracle or endless repetition you manage to dodge all of them, you can get in a few more hits than usual. But this is far from the free down it would be on lesser foes. Sandman is a war of attrition. But Mac has never given up, and neither should you. Endure, and only one more fight is in between you and your greatest prize. It's showtime! Players might not know what to expect from the champion of the world circuit, but those immaculate pecs likely weren't high on their list. Super Macho Man may be far more of a clown than Sandman, but he certainly knows how to put on a show. After being battered, bruised, and beaten, the image of such pectoral perfection will be burned into a player's eyes and soul and will repeat every single time they're launched down to the mat. And it's not like Macho doesn't have the skills to boot. Fast attack, strong defense, low stun time, the world circuit special. 
However, he's not especially harder than Mr. Sandman. Focus. While his macho spin punch can repeat with up to eight reps and will knock you down instantly, it's got a far slower wind-up than the Dreamland Express. And this showboat is far more likely to get smacked with a star uppercut than the ever-serious Sandman. Really, the toughest thing about Super Macho Man are the nerves the player brings into the ring with them. If you lose, you might have to fight Sandman again, or even retire if you've already dropped two matches, needing to go through the World Circuit Gauntlet again in order to even match gloves with Macho Man a second time. Stay down! The champ's a competent boxer, but in practice he's just a more well-rounded Papinski with a more orthodox stance. After coming so far, just inches away from being champion of the world, what makes the final boxer intimidating isn't what's to come, but what's behind you. Why don't you love me? Ugh. Overcome your nerves, smack this million dollar moron down, and congratulations. You are the greatest video game boxer in the entire world. World Circuit's all yours, Mac. In Punch-Out, first you learn the fundamentals of boxing. The major circuit teaches theory, strategy, and application. The world circuit, then, is all about execution, teaching you not only to understand the sport mentally, but intrinsically as well, letting your thumbs do the talking for you. Punch-Out becomes as much about instinct as it is about mastery, and it's safe to say that now, you are a master. But you're not the only one who's reached this profound level of understanding. Join us for the finale as you face off in the battle of the century, the ultimate challenge, the toughest fight of your life. Dreams come true as you share the ring in one final match against Mike Tyson. <laughs>